so welcome to this um, online uh, webinar tonight. Uh, slightly odd times. Um, we've got a few people attending, so we'll just wait a couple of minutes to see if a few more people um, join in. Um, just to say, um, we're going to do what we're going to do is we're going to do a little introduction to start off with. Tell us a little about about ourselves uh, and the courses that we're actually doing. Um, if you have any questions um, that you want to ask. Down at the bottom of the screen, you should have a QA and a um, button. And if you use that Q&A button to ask any questions that you want to ask. OK, uh, but we'll, we'll try and answer uh, as many questions uh, as, as you want to. So um, we've got a few people in uh, at the minute now. So uh, I'm going to hand you over to um, Darren, who is course leader for computing or computer science, uh, I should say. So Darren's going to tell us a little bit about himself uh, and a little bit about his course. Hi, uh, yeah, uh, my name's Darren. I'm a uh, course leader for computer science. Um, I've been now for the last, uh, I forget how many years, but about five years. Um, uh, yeah, I'll be able to answer any questions you've got. Um, this year I'm teaching um, first and second year computer science um, and a little bit of IT. Um, but yeah, if you've got any, any questions about the first year, any questions about the second year, then obviously that's what I'm here for. Okay, so I'll pass you over. Next on my screen is, uh, is Deborah. So Deborah, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, hi, my name's Deborah. I teach um, IT and business studies at QE. And I've been at QE about six years, I think. Seven, cross count. Um, so I teach first and second year IT and I'm teaching first year business studies as well. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Deborah, and then uh, Jackie. Hi, I'm Jackie. Uh, I teach IT first and second year. I've uh, been at QE 11 years, very happy years, and uh, look forward to seeing some of you next year. Okay, uh, and I'm Paul. Uh, so I'm course leader for uh, information technology. Uh, I've been at QE about 20 years, actually. I've been here. I've taught uh, in the past. I've taught computing. Uh, we've taught about four or five different um, IT courses. Uh, and uh, this year we're doing a, a Cambridge Technical um, Extended Certificate um, is the course that we're actually doing. Um, if you have, um, if you want to find out more about the course, I'm just going to share my screen um, here with you. Um, if you go to the QE website, um, if you go to the QE website, uh, what you should find is, um, can you see that screen there, yeah. folks? Can you see that, Dan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, so, um, you'll find um, if you go to our virtual, um, click onto the QE website straight away, you'll go to our virtual um, open evening page. And there's uh, videos from the principal, et cetera, information about our live webinars. Um, if you go to the courses section, you'll find um, a page about computer science, which tells you all about uh, computer science. There's a, um, a video from Darren telling you about the course and some of our students talking about the course there. You can find it. There's a, a more detailed website that we did um, about computing and also a course leaflet on there. And likewise, with IT, um, there is a website on IT where there's me telling you a little bit about the course and we've got some of our students giving you their opinion of the course. And then we have um, a website with more detail on, on there. OK, so that's our sort of a little introduction. Um, and really tonight, um, if I stop sharing that screen there, it's a chance for you to ask questions. Um, so, as I say, at the bottom of the screen, you've got a Q&A button. So if you've got any questions, um, if you'd like to put them um, in there, um, I'm going to ask a, uh, one question. Uh, Darren, um, what do you think you can do with uh, computer science? Is it for um, if, if you left computer uh, uh, QE with computer science? Um, well, I would probably say about 90% of our students, um, maybe even a little bit higher, go on to, to university. Uh, and I would, the majority of my students are probably studying maths and physics. So I get a lot of, a lot of students who go on to study uh, sub, uh, subjects that are related in those two. I get a lot of students go on to study computer science. I, so if I focus on the computer science related activities, then the most 
popular subjects at the minute are, are kind of the buzzwords, if you like, uh, things like cybersecurity and ethical hacking are really popular. Um, but if you're looking for a fairly traditional course, uh, a computer science course, a software engineering course, uh, also very popular. Uh, I do have a few students each year who are doing things like graphics alongside. It's, it's not a popular combination, but there's a one or two. Uh, and they're obviously interested in the animation side of things where there's, you know, there's a, they, they, they kind of fit nicely together, the computer science and the graphics for, for those types of courses. So there's, there's a huge range of options if you're thinking of going to university. Um, I have had a couple of students this year um, go on and do gap years. I've got a couple of gone straight into employment. So really, it's, it's, whatever, it's whatever you're, you're interested in. The, there's plenty of opportunities out there. Uh, for students who, who leave Curie um, and uh, positions at universities of, of kind of all, all levels and all types of courses. Um, so you, we, you, we're not expecting all students to leave with A's and A stars. You know, there's, uh, we have plenty of success stories of students leaving with B's and C's, gone on to, to study um, some really good courses at university. So it's, you know, it's, 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 it's accessible for everybody and there's, there's plenty of options um, once you've completed your A-levels. Jackie, can I ask you about um, some of the difference between um, information technology and computer science? Um, could you tell us a little bit? Oh, and actually, that's very good, because actually Connor has just popped up with that exact same question, actually. So, Connor, I must have been... Uh, psychic. I must have been psychic there as to thinking what you were going to ask there. So, Jackie, can I pass that over to yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, I've been IT the past couple of years, but in the past I have taught computer science. And what I've found with computer science is that you go into a bit more detail. Uh, you've got your theory and your programming in C-sharp, but the IT, we don't go to the programming. You still learn about the computer, you learn about the hardware, as we do the bit of binary, and you're learning a lot, a bit about everything with IT. It's quite a broad syllabus. And there's three exams and two pieces of coursework, where in computer science, there's two exams and one piece of coursework. You do your own computing project and you do that in year two um like I said the IT is a new course this year we've just started teaching I'm quite enjoying it it's really nice we try to make your activities practical and enjoyable um but unfortunately exams are now in the syllabus where they weren't before but there is um is it 67 percent exams Paul it is at, at the minute that's 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 what it is I want to think the uh um it's quite a different style of exam for the for mm. the IT because the, the the computing is a more a traditional style A level where you study the course for um, you, you study the course for two years and then at two years you, at the end of two years you do um, three exams um, in that uh, in that subject. There is a little bit of coursework which I'll I'll let Darren talk to you about um, in, in a little while. The IT is more you sort of assessed as you go along. So whereas with the computing you don't do your exams till the ex till the end, with the IT, what you'd be doing, you'd be doing it, your exams as you go through. So um, with the IT you can take the exams at either the uh, January or at um, in the summer and you can retake those exams. So this year, we're planning to do two of the exams in the summer. Um, if students don't do particularly well in those exams, what they can actually do is they can then um, retake those exams in the uh, Christmas next year. And if they still don't like the, the result, they can retake it, um, retake it um, again um, in the summer. Now, ideally, you don't really want to be doing more than one retake on your on your actual um, exam. Um, but it's slightly easier to support students if they're doing IT than um, than uh, computer science. Um, Debs, I've got a question here. Will I have to buy my own laptop? Um, well, it's always a help if you have a laptop at home to, to do work at home. But um, the college is incredibly well equipped with um, all the tech that you would need to do the to do the course. We teach in labs that use um, double monitors and we there are lots of sort of study areas inside the college that you can use at, at any time. Um, you can book computers to use in the library. And uh, we also we encourage students, obviously it's a little bit difficult at the minute because of COVID, 
but generally, you know, in, in normal circumstances, we'll encourage students if they want to come and work in any of the classrooms. When it's not their lesson, they can come and use um, they can come and use the classrooms while we're teaching in the class if there's spare machines. Um, but I would advise you to have a laptop at home so that you can um, that you can continue with your work away from college um, because all you would need really for a lot of the work that we do is internet access because everything is on, we use Google Classroom for everything. Um, but if you're not able to, to get a laptop, um, we do have plenty of provision in college. It, it would yeah, and you be, can, um, we do have uh, laptops we can yeah. loan out from the, the library, could, yes. et cetera. And depending on yeah. your um, yeah. financial circumstances, um, there are uh, various students who get um, laptops given to them by given to them by by college. So if you haven't got a laptop, um, yeah. it's not something you need to worry about. It's something we can actually sort out yeah. when you get to college. Um, yeah. Darren, I've got a question here. Um, do you need any experience in coding C sharp? And what's the entry requirements? Um, well, the entry requirements are, um, there's a, I would say there's a couple of official entry requirements and those are um, six in maths and a five in English language. Um, if you've, it does, I think the biggest entry requirement is just having an interest in the subject. I mean, that might sound obvious, um, but if you've never studied computer science and, and you really enjoy it, um, don't think you've had to have studied computer science at GCSE. If you haven't studied at GCSE, it's not a problem. Uh, if it's something you really want to do, and and uh, I would say if you, the maths is really the biggest, the biggest factor in how successful you'll be. If you if you if you enjoy problem solving and you're quite good with your maths, then I would say computer science is is probably um, a subject I think the majority of students who enjoy maths would enjoy as well. Um, in terms of programming languages, we uh, we use C sharp as our main teaching language. I know. Uh, students coming from schools in GCC will have studied Python. Uh, we want to teach you something new. We want you to, to kind of um, another string to the bow, if you like. It's um, just learning something new and, and developing those, those kind of essential skills. If you're thinking of going to that, into that field um, as a career, that the more languages you have exposure to, the better. And if you go to university, you're just going to be learning other languages like C and C++, uh, Java, possibly. So we, we, we spend the majority of our time learning um, and coding with C Sharp, uh, but we will cover HTML, CSS, and attached on to that, we do some JavaScript as well. Um, so yeah, I think that that probably covers the majority. I think I'm just trying to think we do some assembly language programming as well. You might have done some little man computer at GCSE. We kind of extend on what you might have done at GCSE there as well. Right, so uh, the next question we've got here is what kind of programs does a computing course use and would students need to pay for them now um, if they were to use them at home? Now, um, in general, the software we use at, at, at college, there's nothing that we ask for you to actually buy or pay for it at home. Um, so we're generally using um, free software um, and things like uh, Microsoft Office, et cetera. You get a student license now, which is free. Um, so I don't think there's anything we need to pay for. Is that right, Darren? In computer science, no, we use Visual Studios, which is the, again, uh, the community edition of that is completely free. Um, on top of that, everything else that we use is either freeware or open source. So it's, you wouldn't have to pay for any of the software that we use at all. Okay. Um, so, uh, Deborah, could I ask about class sizes for both computing and IT? Um, well, we have a max, well, there's a physical maximum as to how many people we could get in the room because of the, um, the computers. So there's, we couldn't possibly have more than 23 students in a room, but none of our classes are quite as big as that. Um, they range between about 16 and 20. Um, I can't actually, I think computing's about the same. Yeah, computing this year is 19 and 20 in first and second years. Yeah. But we can't, and computing's the same. There's, a, there's, there's only like yeah. 20, 24, I think, is the maximum. Yeah, 24 is the could, max in computer science. That we could have in a classroom, um, but it's normally a bit smaller than that. We, we never... I don't think we've ever hit the maximum size. No. I mean, as regards number of, of classes we've got, so I, I think we've got two classes doing uh, computing this year, um, about 40, 40, 
students doing it. Is that right, Darren? Yeah, there's about 40 first years, 40 second years. So there's two classes in each year. Yeah. Now, we've got slightly more um, first years doing IT because we've got three classes of IT. And those classes are, I think they're 21, 20 and 15 this this year is, is what they are. So there's slightly, slightly more. Um, we've got more second year IT students, partly because um, it, was a, it was a different course that we were doing uh, we were doing last last year, um, so it was one hundred percent coursework last year. So that, those those there's more second years at the minute doing that. Um, Jackie, could I ask you about um, how much time you'd spend each week on each subject? Well, you get five hours contact time in college, and that's split into two one and a half hour lessons and two. Right, hours. Jackie's just broken up All there, the so I'm just going to. Sorry. Sorry. I'm just going to mute Jackie a minute, and Debs, could I ask you to answer that question? Um, yeah, as Jackie was saying, we'll have five contact hours a week per subject. Um, so, and that's split up into four lessons. Two lessons are an hour and a half and two lessons are an hour. Um, we also expect work to be done outside of the class as well. Um, we normally say about two and a half hours per subject you should be doing outside of the class as well. Um, obviously we can't monitor that, but that's just what we recommend at A level. Um, and obviously the, the difference is from school at college, you have free periods and you can use those to um, should call them study periods really because you can use those if you want to uh, catch up with work while you're in college um, and as I was mentioning previously there's always computers free that you can work on um, to do work in your free periods. Right okay Jackie we'll try on this one here this time. Um, what GCSEs do you need for IT? If you meet the college requirements for IT, for the college, you will get in. And those requirements are five GCSEs at grade four or above. Uh, we do like GCSE English, but you can resit it at the college if needs to be, and it's because you've got to do a written exam. But if you get offered a place at QE, we are happy to have you on, IC, on ICT. Hopefully I didn't break up. Um, no, that, that was fine. And I think to say, I mean, if you look on the uh, the, the subject leaflet, it says that um, GCSE English is required. And actually, we do require that um, students have got either GCSE maths or GCSE English for their place at, at QE, I think. Um, but there is a little bit of flexibility on that um, English language um, for the for the IT course. But it's I mean, with all the entry requirements, um, if there is a special reason why you haven't met those those entry requirements, we do sort of, um, you know, we will take that in, into account. And, you know, we're looking at you as an individual um, and, you know, under current circumstances, you know, um, it may depend on the amount of time you've missed at school, et cetera, and things like that. And there might be reasons why you, you don't get your English language uh, next year. And we can help you at college at that there. And we do do GCSE resits for um for that if you you know if you wanted to to take that course but it's something that we could discuss um hopefully at an enrollment interview um next summer darren can i ask you about um whether you need gcse computing um to take computer science you don't need it no uh, it's not essential um uh, I would say that the students who have done it probably have a, I wouldn't say they have an advantage, but they definitely have a, um, a kind of a basis to work from. Uh, the students who don't have it, I would teach you that we've got about two or three per class who've not uh, done computer science at GCSE. And I'll probably say they need to work a little bit harder um, in the first few months just to kind of keep up, keep up with everybody else. But I would say the majority of what we're studying anyway is new content. So it's not as if everybody's done it all before. Um, when we introduce a topic, uh, I'll give you an example of the binary stuff that we're doing at the minute. Um, I think the first lesson, everybody had done. Um, but then once we moved on to addition, which I think people have done as well. So there's probably the first two lessons after that, everything was new. So um, 
the only advantage that they, that they had is probably that that understanding of how binary works uh, and conversion between the two numbers. But the topic that we were teaching was new, so I would say it helps. Um, it's not a necessity. If you have studied it before, we would prefer um, that you come to the course with a grade six in that in computer science. But again, that's that's negotiable. It depends on on your grades in, in things like maths and English. Um, so yeah, to, to to answer Paul's question in, in nice and nice and short answer, no, you don't need computer science. Um, so Deborah, what tell us what other subjects goes well? Do you think with IT? Um, we have a lot of students that tend to do um, things like media with IT, um, graphics, quite creative subjects, um, because business. We, well, business, yes. I teach a lot of students, both business and IT, to be honest, and they must be sick of the sight of me, um, because we get a lot of students on the IT course will go on to do... Um, fairly sort of creative courses at university. You get a lot of um, students going on to do things like game design, um, but digital for forensics has, has taken off this uh, past few years. We get a lot of students wanting to do that. I mean, to be honest, I, the IT, you could actually do that with practically any subject. Um, it doesn't take you down one route where you would say, oh, you have to do sciences with it, or you have to do maths with it. It can, you could go the creative route and do it with media and art and graphics, or you could, we have students do it with PE, with history, a lot of students do it with geography. There isn't really one, whereas with computer science, as Darren said earlier, a lot of students will do, you know, you say what your other two subjects and they nearly all of them will say maths and physics. Um, with IT, I think the uh, Jackie and, um, Paul will agree with me here, you tend to get more of a mix of the students' yeah. second and third subjects. It's a, it's a little bit more open, I would say, to what subjects you can mix it with. Can I ask it, Darren, the same question about computer science then? So yeah, as, as Debbie mentioned there, it's the majority of students, if you ask them, they would say, um, what are you studying alongside computer science? And I'll say maths and physics. Um, I, would, I would say that's quite, a big majority of my students are doing that, but it's, I actually love to see students on my course who are, are doing subjects, maybe on the humanity side of things, or they're doing an English subject, because when it comes to answering the, the papers, the questions on the exam paper, um, it's really, it's really noticeable that they can, they can analyze, evaluate uh, questions, particularly the long answer questions. So it's, I wouldn't say if you, if you don't do maths and physics, then don't do computer science. I wouldn't say that at all. It's just that just seems to be the most popular combination. Um, we get a mix of students to, with, with all sorts of the sciences. And as I said before, I've had students in the past. Um, one particularly very, very good student did music tech. Um, uh, we've got students in the past who done art and graphics. So I think if, you've, if you're that type of student who's, who's quite well-rounded, so you're good, at, you're good at many different things, then... Uh, that would probably stand you in good stead for uh, for a computer science course, particularly when it comes to to the exams. Now we've got quite um, a specific question here: Could computer science IT be a good subject to do um, for a job in the railway, e.g., driving? Uh, I mean, that you'd need to go. Um, you'd probably need to ask a careers advisor, or you would need to go and ask, um, go and look at. Um, LNER's website and when they're recruiting and they're recruiting for drivers, seeing what see what they want. Now, I suspect that they would want to have A levels and they wouldn't be specifically asking for any specific A levels. They're probably looking for some <coughs> other type of aptitude on that on that particular subject there. So I say that's quite specific to to ask on there. And I say I suspect that that sort of level of job they'd be looking for A levels, but you'd need to actually go and have a look at. Um, you know, job adverts and see what they're actually su suggesting. Um, I was just going to ask Jackie about careers in the IT and computing industry, because um, uh, Jackie, I think you're married to a network engineer, aren't you? Um, and, I'm uh, not. I'm married to a, the, the lead cloud architect specialist for the NHS. He's got a fancy title now. Tell us about some of the um, career, careers in, uh, in IT computing then. 
Yeah, it's it's rapidly evolving. It changes all the time. I did my degree in computer science and wanted to be a programmer and ended up a teacher. I love my job. Um, my husband did network computing and again, he worked as a network technician. Then he progressed to a network manager and did very well there. And then cloud computing came about. And he took the, a leap of faith and trained and did that. And there's a lot of cloud specialists around. A lot of businesses want to get on the cloud and you can do that. You still have database administrators who need to be there and manage database systems. And there's not a thing wrong with that. But it is getting funkier. You have cyber, synet, um, phonetic, cyber forensics, um, which is in, interesting. Teesside do a nice course on that. We've got digital forensics, cyber security. Ethical hacking, as Darren said earlier, with computer science, that's a, a good trend. I want to know who's, uh, who's dropping all the money from the banks, which are willing to keep learning. IT, computer science, are always evolving, and you learn and keep There's nothing that you really can't do within the IT sector as long as you are willing to keep your skills up to date. And translate and you can always become an IT or computer science teacher too. Thank you, thank you very much for that Jackie. I mean I think to say is that if you look at the number of jobs in IT and computing uh, you know it is it is increasing and it is going to carry right. on increasing and if you look at the in this pandemic the number of jobs you know they're wanting people with IT skills they're wanting people with with computing skills can do, uh, to go and do those those jobs. Um, I think one of the advantages of coming to, to QE is you actually be taught by all of us sitting here have got um, computing related um, degrees or MSCs in, in, in computing. So we're all sort of fully qualified in, in that, in, in our field. Um, Deborah teaches some IT, but she also teaches some business. So there's a question for you here. Um, in what ways do business and computing work well together? Um. Let me have a think about that one. It's a tricky one. Um, if you were thinking about doing the two A-levels, um, the A-level business studies, because there is also the business tech um, subject, but if you were thinking about doing A-level business with the um, computer science, the business I'm teaching at the minute, there was a lot of maths in it. And it's quite, um, anyone that is struggling percentages and things like that anything to do with maths they are they are finding it a bit of a struggle so you tend to find that the students that want to do computing normally have that kind of brain where they are um, quite good at maths and they're not scared of maths and the same is true with business um, there's a there's a lot of maths content in it there's a lot of you have to think quite logically you're given scenarios um, and you have to work through those scenarios, coming up with um, uh, ideas, the best practice for a company. Um, so there are there are some similarities between the two subjects, and um, they do go together quite well, actually. Um, particularly if you like maths, um, you would find business studies quite quite straightforward. Some of the calculations that we do, we do a lot of stuff with accountancy and finance. Um, so there is quite a quite heavy maths content in it. Um, so you could, um, they are suitable, both of them, for students who are quite comfortable doing maths. Now, uh, we're just about coming up to the, to the end. You've got a couple of more minutes if you've got any questions you want to, uh, want to ask. Um, you can always email the college at QE. Um, the, the, web, the website has got the email address on. Uh, and if you, if you use that email there, it'll get passed on to us. Or if you look at those websites, it's got our emails on there. Hopefully, we'll have a chance to have um, some uh, in-person open evenings where you can come and have a look around college. Um, just to end up with today, I'm just going to go around the panel and I'm just going to ask them um, to sum up. I want to, to give me an answer to two questions. Just give me one reason why I should come to QE, Darren, and one reason why I should do computer science. And Deborah and uh, Jackie, I'm going to ask you exactly the same, but that time for, for this time for IT. Okay, so Darren, do you want to start? 
I was hoping to go last, then I could uh, listen to what everybody else had to say. <laughs> um, I would say come to QE. Um, I'll pick. I'll pick up on something that Paul said. The teaching, I think, um, is very good. Like like Paul said, we're we're all very well qualified in our subjects. We've been teaching here for a long time. Um, my classes, I would, I couldn't sing their praises uh, any higher. They're, I think they're they're an excellent bunch of students, and I think if you come here, you'll find that you'll fit in very well. Uh, with very like-minded students from different, many from different backgrounds, but they they all share a common interest. They're here because they want to learn and they want to do well and they want to progress. Uh, as for computer science, um, well, I can I can just sing the praises of my own subject, really, can't I? I mean, I, I love the subject. I think it's it's a fascinating subject in terms of of what you can get out of it. I think you you get as much out of it as you put in. Uh, the logic and problem solving elements, the pro programming element elements, I think it, the students will agree, they, they absolutely love it. They, they love the, the kind of the reward and the, um, the feeling of, of, of kind of satisfaction you get out of, of, um, of solving problems uh, with programming. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it's a great course. It's, it, it's, it really is something that if, if you've got a passion and a strong interest in, that if you come to QE to study it, um, I, think you'll, I think you'll really enjoy it. I think it's slightly more than one reason there, but uh, that's fine. Uh, Deborah, beat that. Come on. Right. Okay. So, why should you come to QE? Well, I think you'd be surprised, students. I think they are surprised when they come here that it's it is very different from school. Um, we treat you as adults. There are no bells. There's no uniforms. You call us by our first names, um, and on your part, we expect you to sort of take some responsibility for your own learning. But um, I would say the atmosphere here is very relaxed. Uh, well, I'm at home actually, so it's very relaxed, the atmosphere here, but the atmosphere <laughs> in college is very <laughs> relaxed. There's no, um, um, how can I put it? We don't have like sort of behavior problems. Everybody's very respectful to each other. It's actually a lovely place to work as a teacher. And why should you do IT? Well, you get the best teachers if you do IT. You get the nicest teachers. And we have been known to give out sweets in lessons. So, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> what more do you want? <laughs> Excellent that one, teaching and sweets. <laughs> right. Not a no, no one from Health England's watching this, but carry on. <laughs> Jackie. Um, I, I was going to say the atmosphere, but I've, Debs has said that and Darren said it. So I'm going to say the pass rate. We are phenomenal oh. at what we do. We are very successful. So yes, the atmosphere. You are 16 to 18 years old. It's a big part of your life, a big changes, and you are becoming an adult, so you should be treated like that, as I echo what Deb said. But our success rate, you come, you engage with us, you turn to our lessons, we'll give you sweets, not all the time, but special times, um, and talk to us, communicate with us. We will get you through the next two years of your career, your path through life, it with IT and computer science and hopefully we have a laugh along the way and, and IT you can take your examinable times you don't need to study for two years and then pass it we can do resets <laughs> I'll do IT okay right uh, thank you very much for that uh, you three I'm not going to actually add any more to that there other than say uh, we've got one last question here do either course teach programming? And if so, what language do you recommend? So uh, computer science is the one where you do the, the programming in and the language that you recommend is probably C sharp. Is that right, Darren? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. OK, so as I say, if you've got any more questions on uh, on those subjects, please, uh, please email us. Um, and uh, hopefully that has been useful tonight. So all it's to say now is goodbye. <laughs>